for the whistle. I'm Caressa Stinchcomb. If you saw him in public, you may not recognize him by face, but if you hear his voice, you're a bit more likely to recognize that. That's because he's announced thousands of high school sports games over the course of 50 years and was eventually dubbed the voice of Class B. The wrestling match in December of 69 was the first time I picked up the mic. Starting at a guard, he stands six foot one, a senior wearing number 24, Pearl Keys. For the next 50 years, Larry Lauser would call game after game. Basketball, football, track, softball, baseball, wrestling, and even a year of soccer. Early on, he knew what he needed to do to make sure every kid felt special hearing their name, even just by simply making sure he said them correctly. That's Mike Hauske. With the name Lauser, you know, so oftentimes it's loser. So I know what it's like to have it mispronounced. He also made sure to remain unbiased when on the mic. I did not want anyone in the stands to know what team I was rooting for. I think it isn't fair to the kids. I think they should all be treated the same. And he made sure not to leave anyone out. He did it for the basketball players that weren't the starters. He, he announced their names and gave them the same feeling that he gave the starters because he didn't want any of the kids to feel like they didn't matter. His son Scott remembers going to games with him when he was a kid. I always wanted to hear him announce my name. Scott was a multi-sport athlete playing basketball, track, and cross country. My junior year I hit my first three-pointer and it was against Dickinson High at the auditorium and uh, we were going back down the court and he announced my name and then he said into the microphone he said that's my boy. And it was embarrassing for a junior in high school to hear that in front of everybody. But it's something, obviously, to this day, I've never forgotten and I cherish. Scott says his dad would always remember little details about the athletes from the thousands of games over the years. But there's one in particular that they'll both never forget. The Napoleon Imperials girls basketball team was playing in a tournament in the early 80s. There was a young eighth grade girl. She scored, and I, I wasn't watching because I was getting ready for the game. I says, who got that? And they says, Barbie Doll. So I just says, Barbie Doll scoring. But it was a three. And the guy next to me says, boy, did she give you a look? That was a three. I was keeping stats at that game, and I was in junior high. And I remember that, and I thought I wanted to hear that name too. And he wasn't looking, and she was running down the floor looking like, how come I didn't hear my name? And I thought the same thing. Come on, Dad. I wanted to hear that one, too. Barbie doll for three. Now, if she's listening, I can sleep with a clear conscience tonight. The impact Larry had on making the athletes feel special went beyond the kids. He wanted to make sure those working alongside him felt it, too. Being a post big before, I, I would joke with Larry all the time and say, you know, give us bigs um, um, a little do here. We can get announced first and get really excited. It was an honor to do that for her. Larry, if he was announcing, always said, Thank you, Dr. Mattern. And um, it was an incredibly special thing um, to know that Larry was going to say thanks. Larry was inducted into the Minot High School Hall of Fame in 2013 for his contribution to the athletics program. But to him, it was all a labor of love. Plus, he always got a front row seat. Best seat in the house. Larry hung the mic up in 2019. He says he wants to call at least one more game during the 20s to make it seven different decades he's announced in.